Hi, my name is Rochelle Lowen. I just finished an interview with Keith Andrew, who is spearheading a radio talk show for people, uh, for support for people who have disabilities, learning disabilities, that is. And um, I had a wonderful interview with him, and I look forward to part two. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, Keith Andrew, and you're watching episode 585. I'm here with the talented and beautiful Roselle Wowen. I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. My pleasure. Now, for people who want to know what my talk show is about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a word in disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of wording disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. You just prove to them to still out to something. So, hashtag break the labels. So that being said, half hour, 33 minutes of your time. Say anything you want. Say anything you want to talk about. I was told to stay away from the F words, and so if you want to drop the F bond, that's whatever you want to do. But I try to keep it PG, PG thirteen. So if you want to say shit or or the hell or whatever, that's good. But to get those big people interested, I need to keep my guests on a leash so, and myself on a leash. Say say whatever you want, but keep it PG thirteen. Got it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so with that being said, um, for people who want to know, Ms. Rosell is a former professional trainer, model, actress, and WWE diva. And on top of that, why you are an inspiration, not just to me, but for people with dis disabilities, is because you happen to have a disability of yourself. And as I mentioned to you before we got started, this is, I do want to have a lot of big names on this show, and we have a mutual acquaintance, actually. And this is a perfect example to show you this is not a wink, wink wrestling shoot. Because I've seen wrestling interviews, they're pretty dumb and boring. It's, you know, ask the same questions over and over. So, this is an example for everyone out there. So, the first question I was going to ask you is how was life growing up? And when you were in high school and college, did you do any sports? So life growing up for me was a really a mixed bag, as it is for most people. Um, however, for me, um, school uh, proved to be a little bit difficult, and it, it did because uh, I do have a high IQ, or what some would consider um, a higher IQ. However, sometimes you know there's a disconnect. Um, for um, myself with regards to being able to express myself or or find answers uh, to questions that may be asked in tests or focus on the teacher. Um, oh, I'm sorry about this here. Let's just decline that. Um, so I, uh, I, you know, I, I did find it hard to focus in school and therefore a little bit difficult to retain information. Um, but I am... Um, relatively witty and quick on my feet. So, you know, I had to really learn a lot of tricks um, to help me get by. So that, you know, uh, life growing up uh, in school was a little bit difficult and, and life growing up um, on the personal front um, was was a mixed bag as well. So um, I've, uh, like, like most, I mean, we never get out of this life unscathed. You know, everybody has their stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I had to grow up really quickly. There was there was a lot that happened in my young life that uh, was was uh, helped facilitate um, a really quick growth that had to be done. And so, um, and what I mean by that is, I left home very very early. So, I left home at 12 years old, and I lived in at friends' houses, um, and. Uh, so this this actually um, just a preamble. This actually relates to your next question uh, with regards to sports. 
So, because I really didn't have um, somewhere to go after school sometimes, um, I and I was a good kid, I would delve into um, track and field, or I would go to the gym and I would weight lift. Um, so I started doing that at a very young age. I started running and, and lifting weights and just sort of preparing myself for um, a life as a professional athlete. So um, it, was, it was a good little preamble to the WWE I, you know I had built a lot of resilience up mentally and physically so yeah no absolutely and then I saw everybody you are a personal trainer I would have loved to work with you on that it's because I have a fat neck I'm trying to motivate myself to lose weight by I keep getting sidetracked and self-doubts but we can get to that later on when I pass the show over to you but the first thing I'm going to ask you is now that you hint towards it, but actually now let's, what the hell is it, let's go, let's, it's completely random. I was going to ask you about WWE, but I was going to save that for last. What did he do first? Were you a WWE superstar, model, actress, fitness trainer? You know, what was your very first goal? Like, what was your breakthrough? Um, well, to tell you the truth, everything sort of happened by chance. So the trajectory of my career all began um, in about 1999. Uh, I was winning pageants, and at the time, um, there was this huge uh, international pageant called Hawaiian Tropic. Uh, and now I think it's called Tropic Beauty or something like that, but it was a big deal at the time. Donald Trump sponsored it or was one of the judges, and... Um, a lot of celebrity judges were there, and um, <clears throat> I had won um, Miss White Tropic for Canada, and I just had entered it just basically just for fun, but it ended up becoming kind of a big thing. So that was, excuse me, <clears throat> that was the beginning, um, and then next thing you know, that sort of rolled into me doing photo shoots for magazine covers and calendars and that sort of thing. And then that rolled into me moving to Los Angeles and shooting the covers for Playboy and uh, Muscle and Fitness and Fitness RX. So I've been on the covers of, of many, many international magazines. Uh, and then uh, from there, it was just, just sort of a natural progression. One thing led to another, led to another. And then um, I tried out for the WWE and... Um, well, I didn't actually technically try out for them. What happened was um, my agent called me and asked me to do a gig in Anaheim. And it was just a small little gig. It was just a small little walk these wrestlers out to the stage. So I did that, and I thought, why not seize this moment? So this is, you know, sort of like a life lesson for everybody. We hear it, but not often do we always seize the moment. So um, I saw Vince McMahon there when I was um, hired to just just simply walk two wrestlers up to the stage. And I saw Vince McMahon and I introduced myself and I gave him my card. And uh, I said I'd like to work for him. Well, I didn't hear anything from the WWE for quite some time, I think about six months. And then out of the blue, they called me and they said they'd like to sign me. So that's how that happened, but uh, it was just a natural progression, um, one thing leading to another, to another, and and so I, my end game wasn't at that time to to wrestle, but that's that's what happened, and I was just so gracious to have been there for the brief period that I was there. It was it was extremely mentally and physically taxing, but uh, I, I feel very grateful for that opportunity. No, absolutely. And while on the subject to WWE, I actually did an application. <laughs> a lot of people are going to make fun of me for this. I actually did an application for the Performance Center. And it's like, do you, what is your qualifications? It's like, well, I can put a good face on. <laughs> but I was like doing all these things. They're like, what do you do? I was like, well, might as well just be up front. I have a disability, I have, and I created my own talk show to break labels. Well, it's April, and that was about January, maybe, like uh, December. They're probably laughing their asses off, but it's like, really? Is this for real, or is it not for real? But I tried, I see an opportunity. Like I said, that's my biggest thing, and why my family gets nuts at me. 
when I see an opportunity, you know, even when I am at work, I give you an example. I work at this one store. I'm a cashier. And I was in the back room. And I saw the higher ups in the room. And I was like, oh, well, who, who's, who's that? Oh, are people from corporate. And a little light bulb went off my head. I'm like, hmm, how can I benefit from it? Not to sound like an ass or anything. It's like, how can I benefit or how because doing this my talk show is what I want to do until I die I'm very passionate about that I'm not saying that to be cute or funny so I went over and I like I said if you see an opportunity you have to take it grab it by you know Triple H or Paul says grab life by the throat yeah I probably Vince McMahon said something like that too but when I see someone important I go right over to them um there's this fair in um, New York, the Ulster County Fair, and there's people that show their artwork and whatever. And the same thing, you know, I go over, I introduce my, this is why it drives my parents nuts. Because I go over and I introduce myself, say, hey, my name is Keith Andrew, very nice to meet you. I'm a talk show host for people with disabilities. And I hear from the background, there's a time and place where you can do that, but if you keep doing that, we're going to be at home. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember I went to a um, big event. I, uh, I, It's funny, but it isn't funny. In a way, it is. I walked over to Norman Smiley. And I was like, because he was just sitting there like this, hands folded. And he's just walking around or whatever. I looked over and I said, walked over. And I said, yeah, um, this is going to sound really retarded on my part. But, uh. Yeah, I don't have any money. I just wanted to come over and introduce myself. And it's like, that's really funny. So, you know, I shook his hand and I said, I would ask you for a picture, but I don't want to impose on you. I just wanted to come over and introduce myself. Then I was like, huh. Because I, I don't have a addicting personality. So once I start to do something, I start to get addicted to it. So maybe I do have addicting personality. I looked over and was like, huh, who else can I introduce myself to? And mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember her last name, but her first name is Men Mindy. Mindy. Um, mm -hmm. I can show you the picture after. And I walked over and said, hey, no, same thing. My name's Keith. Very nice to meet you. I have no money. I do apologize. And I know you, do, you guys don't like having fans just randomly walk over to you because, you know, this is a business. If you want people pay you but I see when I see an opportunity I like to introduce myself so you know I, I see opportunities and sometimes people don't care and sometimes there's people are like you know there's a place and a time but I have no filter and that goes to my disability where I'm like CM Punk I don't drink I don't smoke I'm straight edge I have no filter I walk to the beat of my own drum. I read and learn at a fifth grade level. That's because I'm on the spectrum of being retarded. Not really a compliment, but I can pass for it. Um, I guess it's a compliment in a way. <laughs> but, um, it, so, it's a long story about that. Just give me the quick highlights. So, yeah, I would love to work for WWE, but... Going back to my next class, and I might say this is not a wrestling shoot. Can I just intercept for one second? Yeah, go for it. Say whatever you want. Um, the 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 word, and I'm gonna have to say it, but I, I'm shocked that you would use it. The word "retarded" is somewhat obsolete. It seems because it's so. Um, Perfectly it correct. Yeah, yeah, and so I'm shocked that you would use that. Um, is it because uh, it, you know you're just humoring yourself, or I'm just just wondering? No, I did. This is your time. You can say whatever you want. Uh, because when I was growing up, I was called that all my life. Oh. You know, by you know my siblings or my so-called friends and whoever acquaintances. So for me, using the word, you know, retarded, and no offense for people out there, for me, it's normal. And I know for other people, it's kind of like, why would he say that? 
But if you were told that all your life, you know, yeah. it, it's. I'd say I'm trying to find the words for it, but it to me let's make it easier. It's for me. It's normal, but I'm just like saying, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It became a part of your daily vernacular because it was it was said to you. I understand. Okay. And I don't mean a disrespect. I do apologize. I I I'm, I know that you don't. Your talk show is to help people with disabilities. <laughs> of course, yeah. No, you're doing a great thing. Just curious. Oh, absolutely. And now the next question I was gonna ask you is going back to your college years. Were you a study nerd or party animal? Well, um, I wasn't a party animal by any stretch. Uh, I went to college initially for uh, law enforcement. And uh, I, my personality is, is well suited for that. Uh, I'm, you know, uh, I'm a straight shooter, and uh, I uh, definitely am a person who who thinks that uh, you know uh, the law is great, and uh, that came out kind of weird. But but yeah, I know I, I think I'm well suited to be a police officer. However, I was. Uh, pulling away from from that uh, because I did enter into that pageant in my aforementioned uh, answer that I gave you. So so um, I only went to college for about half a year and then I was uh, and then I was uh, sort of catapulted into the modeling world. Now I did revisit college afterwards um, as recently as 2009 and I have my communications degree. So I, um, I went back to school and I majored in college in uh, radio, television and broadcast news. And so I became a, um, a news anchor and then I finished that up with a couple more years to get my communications degree. So um, yeah, I, I definitely am uh, somewhat familiar with doing interviews and I am oftentimes the interviewer. So yeah, this is my, this is my gig. <laughs> so I'm comfortable here, yeah. If you're interested, maybe you can uh, interview me and give me some pointers. I would love that. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I know, uh, just poke a fun, because I kind of have fun, you know, earlier, you, you know, you coughed and then you, you stuttered. It's, I was going to say, but I didn't want to interrupt. I have that effect on people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but then the next thing I was going to tell you is, um, well, actually, for that matter, is... What were some of your favorite moments and memories from working in WWE? And then I'm going to ask you the next question about social media. Can social media make you or break you? Okay, so um, favorite parts. Um, really being out on stage. Like, really, that was, that was such a highlight. Uh, before... Um, E Entertainment or any of um, of whatever event avenues uh, started exposing what goes on backstage. Um, I really had it was really uh, uh, shocking to see um, the types of things that would happen backstage. So there was a lot of drama on stage and off stage. So that was very taxing, and 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 because there was so much drama. Um, that took away from a lot of fun things that could have been. Um, and I was in my 20s, so uh, nowadays I wouldn't pay it any mind. But um, at the time, um, before backstage, before the like divas, you know, um, TV show happened or anything like that, um, I, you know, I, I, I did say to more than a few people, I'm like, if you think. WWE is like wild on stage. You should, see, you should see backstage. So it was just, there was a lot of havoc that was constantly being wreaked, um, which took away, like I said, from things that could have been so much more. Um, so the highlights are, are few. Um, I, d I did like connecting with um, some of the wrestlers. Um, Dwayne Johnson being like, one person that really influenced me in a very positive light. Um, he is a very enlightened soul. Um, and, 
you know, would never say a bad word about anyone and is, is, is very humorous. And he's exactly the same um, in private, you know, and, and behind stage than he, as he is in the public eye. So, so that was a highlight for me. Um, Stephanie McMahon was always just the kindest, kindest person. Um, so that was a highlight for me as well. Uh, and I, I also liked being, you know, like, like I liked being in the public spotlight. It was really fun to be able to go to grocery stores and have little kids come up to you and ask for your autograph and, you know, that sort of thing that, you know, it's so, it's so flattering. And, um, so those are the highlights I would say. And also traveling, like seeing different parts of the world and, and experiencing new things was cool. Um, so that would be the answer to my your first question. The answer to your second question, um, refresh my memory. Oh, social media. So social media. Um, I have, uh, 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 I would say probably a, up until recently, a slightly negative feeling towards social media. So what I mean by that is um, Instagram is something that I feel up until recently, or I felt rather, um, to be somewhat vacuous and um, addictive and time-wasting and um, and unfulfilling as a whole. So um, even if you're following the most fulfilling um, uh, people, it still is a time sucker and it's, uh, I feel like in the past, like the, the, it wasn't as rewarding as it was time sucking. So, so as a result, I deleted my Instagram account, I think four times. And, uh, I just, I just, yeah, I couldn't really, I just couldn't really get my head around it. But, you know, adapt or die, right? So it's the wave of the future, whether you like it or not. So I, you know, I have to get on board. And um, I feel like I have a lot to offer. So I'm jumping back into Instagram in, um, in full throttle, on full throttle. So I've been posting a lot and, and uh, I, I see that it's, it's making a bit of an impact, which is nice. Um, so yeah, up until recently, my feelings and thoughts towards Instagram or Facebook or whatever were really warm, but now I'm adapting. Yeah. And I'm embracing even. Yeah. <laughs> now I do have two more wrestling questions and I promise I will drop it. But the mm -hmm. first thing I'm going to ask you is, are you nervous? Was I nervous? No. Are you nervous? Because I okay. noticed your eyes keep shifting. No, no. Oh gosh, no, no, no. I'm I'm used to being on camera. This is just, it's just uh, no, not at all. But I was rest, I was nervous wrestling for sure. But it's part of you know. I think my eye shifting is part of my ADD ness, right? And this is also a casual interview, so I don't feel like I have to be focused right into the camera right now. If I was reading the news, absolutely. But but because it's a casual interview I don't feel it's necessary and I just want to make sure I'm not imposing on you I do apologize no I'd let you know I'd let you know but the last two wrestling questions I was going to ask you is you mentioned something that caught my interest you started in 1999 you know how long were you with the WWE and did you work because you mentioned off the air your friends was Ashley a mutual acquaintance of ours um so if you started in 1999, but she was there in like, oh, five, oh six. So how did you guys bump into each other? Uh, okay, so I th I think maybe you misinterpreted something that I said. Probably. So my my career started in 1999. So that's when I that's when I began doing pageants, and so. Um, I wasn't in the WWE, like, that's when my trajectory into show business started, right. was in 1999. Um, my uh, uh, WWE uh, time frame was um, in 2004, 2005, and I didn't, yeah, so, so and Ashley actually came right after me. She was sort of on my heels in, in many um, areas of show business, so 
you know, with regards to pageantry, she she did pageants right after me and won the same pageants that I won. And she did Playboy, like, right after me. She did WWE right after me. So she, like, and it's very, it's, it's very odd to have found a friend that, you know, I didn't really know very well up until recently who followed the same career trajectory as me because one thing doesn't necessarily lead to another in this case like they're they're not even related all of these things like maybe playboy and wwe are but but uh, she did lots of other um career th uh moves that were very similar to mine and so it would be analogous to um you meeting somebody who has exactly the same work history of you as you like it would it would be very bizarre um like the same education and work history and lives in you know what i mean like so it was it was yeah it's kind of a cool thing um but yeah no i i i didn't actually really know ashley until until relatively recently but she was kind of on my heels career-wise for years decades <laughs> yeah yeah now we're gonna take a quick. Uh, I was gonna ask you something else, but and we can skip that. We're gonna save it for part two. Uh, but we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, I'm gonna ask you about disabilities, and then I'm gonna pass it over to you. You can ask me anything you like. Sure. Sounds good. Oh, William. This is Vanessa Lina. Uh, Adrian Lina. Hi, uh, Michael. This is Cynthia Rapps today. I'm Sonny Fisher. This is Shane Smith. My name is Alexandra Bowie. This is Amelia Clover. Hi. I'm Amy Linden. Hi, I'm Amy Nicole Brown. It's Meg Green. Hi, my name is Asasa Caldwell. Hi, everybody, I'm Brooke Percy. Hi, I'm Bryn Bird. Hi, I'm Casey Dunn. Hi, it's Cassandra Kavinsky. Hi, I'm Christina Breza. I'm Cindy Hogan. I'm Courtney Sinello. Hi, I'm Daisy. My name is Deborah Jane East. Hi, my name is Danielle Marasea. Hi, everyone, I'm Victoria London. Hi, I'm Heather Crona. Hi. I'm Heather Callahan Stevens. Hi, I'm Jay Nicole Ralph. And it's Jamie Patrell. Nice it's Tui. My name is Julia Brinkowitz. <laughs> Kathleen Wills. Kimberly Amato. Hi, my name is Laura Putnam. Hi, Hi I'm Laura Chapanis. Hi, everyone. I'm Alyssa Damas. This is Michelle Mupo, a.k.a. Fusion. I'm, the, I'm Nate Oliver. Hi, my name is Sarah Joy Mount. Hi, I'm Susan Brinder. Um, hi, everyone. This is Venus Leone. Hi, I'm Cheryl Turner. Hi, I'm Stephanie Herrera, and I was just on the Keith Andrew Network. It was tons of fun. We used up all our time and then some. I really recommend this show, and uh, try to be a guest on Keith's show. It was super fun. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the talented and beautiful Roselle, and I just want to say thank you for being with us on episode 585. I know we like we're talking off the air. When I don't do my interviews, my disability does show more, and I kind of hesitate and spaz a little. But this is therapy um, for myself about, you know, being comfortable, meeting new people, talking to people. So every episode, it's different. Sometimes I put a good mask on, and sometimes you get to see my disability. You know, I try to hide that, but <laughs> what's that being said? I'm going to ask you about disabilities, and with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to you. You know, are you willing, well, Perry, you're working with me, because you are. Are you willing to work with people with disabilities? And, let's see, uh, how am I going to rephrase that? Are you willing to work with people with disabilities, and have you ever worked with people with disabilities, besides me? Well, as I, as I mentioned... I do have a disability myself, so so uh, yes, <laughs> I absolutely am. Um, there's absolutely no uh, no prejudice um, that I am aware of within myself that uh, would mean um, uh, that I wouldn't work with people with disabilities. And, and I don't think you know I can only speak for myself. But that being said, um, that. There is prejudice out there, and 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 sexism, and racism, and all of that, and they're all sort of all silly, silly, silly little things. Because you know, I, I'm gonna get kind of philosophical here, but we're all in this together. Like we're all in this. We all share a planet. We're all in this together in a really, really healthy brain. A healthy, a mentally healthy human doesn't see separation. 
doesn't see separation between men or women, doesn't see separation between whites or blacks or Chinese or Af- like you name it, um, or, or people with disabilities. There's no separation. We're all connected. And we should be really, you know, and this sounds sort of like cliche, but it's true, um, picking each other up um, and instead of rejecting each other. And it's, it's, it's rather sad when I do see that, but I don't, don't pay any mind to it because I feel like whatever you focus on, you sort of get more on. So more of, so, um, you know, that, that sort of thing might be out there, but I'm not really all that aware of it anymore because I focus my attention into positive directions. No, so absolutely. I agree with you. <laughs> Now I'm going to pass this show over to you. It's the last five minutes. You can ask me anything you want. Our gloves off. I have nothing to hide. You know, this is your time. Like I said, supporting a good cause and making a friend out of it. Okay. Well, I have five minutes. Jeez, I wasn't prepared for that. Let's see here. Okay, so 585 episodes. So that means when did you start your career? Uh, 2013. 2013. And would you say the reason why your um, disability uh, is less prevalent in your day-to-day life um, when you are doing the show is because you're in some sort of, like, the, this is a passion and you're in sort of a proverbial vortex. Does that make sense when you're, when you're, um, when you're on air? Like you kind of lose, like you, you feel so good and you lose track of time maybe and and you're just really in a passionate way. So that feeds well, your goal. I tell you what my dad said um, when I went to see, you know, this person. Uh, my dad said he, we found a mate. He said, uh, Keith usually lives in an alternative reality. Mm-hmm. Good. That's a good thing. Yeah. I, I don't think he meant it as a good thing, but it doesn't mean actually, I had my head up my ass. But, <laughs> no, but, it actually is a good thing. I think we should all live in a, as blissful of a place as we possibly can. And that blissful place is up here. That It's up here. It's not outside. It's up here. So we're so free. We're so free to live in any reality we want. We can choose to live in bondage. Like, we can choose to live, uh, you know, an ex extremely difficult life and uh, an extremely painful life uh, or we can choose to live a very happy life and be grateful for whatever it is that we have so so whatever reality you choose is is fine I mean it's all a choice it's all a choice and and I choose to live in a reality that's very blissful and and you know that reality consists of absolutely no news um, I have no idea what's going on in the world and uh, I don't need to know I don't need to know like where there's bombs going off or people being slaughtered or it doesn't make me any better of a person and and uh, so I, I you know this is what I choose and and I think for your dad to have said that you know you can you can take that that little tidbit and and feel good about it that's okay you live in an alternative reality keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Don't let anyone stop you. <laughs> I'd rather live with fairies and butterflies in my head than anything else. So, yeah. Um, but, uh, so, yeah, good for you for making an impact, Keith, on, uh, you know, on people with disabilities. It's, you know, people do need to step up and spearhead, you know, uh, empowering movements to help people. It's really important that there is influencers out there that do make a positive impact on people who feel like maybe their disability is a setback, but it's not always a setback. It's not. Um, Sometimes having a disability could be the greatest gift in the world. It depends on how you look at it. I mean, there's people out there. um, I can only reference people with my type of disability because I'm only familiar with that. And because I am attention deficit disorder, a hyperactivity disorder, adult, um, you know, there are many influential people who have similar um, disabilities and they use it to their benefit, like the guy who owns JetBlue who refuses to take medication um, and believes that having um, an ADHD brain 
uh, means, and this is true, means that your your neurons are firing off much faster than other people, and you're thinking much faster, and that's a big benefit. Ringtone is a big benefit. So, um, I uh, yeah. So it's all in, it's all perspective, right? But uh, anyway. Sorry, where were we? Um, I'm going to continue on and, and ask you my next question. So what was life like growing up for you? Um, for the most part, it was pretty much normal. You know, I started actually writing my book about it, but I lost interest because I pretty much I got jealous of my brother. I used him for inspiration. I wrote a book after he did. Unfortunately, I act exuberant and I said, you know, is it readable? You know, is there any spelling errors? Like, no, no, you know, it's fine. And it was one joke after another in there because it was, it was really bad. First off, it was the title. Because I'm a big fan of Eric Bischoff, and I met him recently, and uh, I'm trying to get him on the show. The t title of the book was, When You Overcome Controversy, Dreams Do Come True, Even If You Have a Disability. What? Dreams Do Come True, well, no, I I even forgot about the book. You get to how bad it was. When you overcome controversy, dreams do come true, even if you have a learning disability. And my brother said to me, first off, you can't overcome controversy. And second of all, the book was filled of spelling errors. Like, give me an example. Um, there's a part where I said my mom went to community college. Instead of saying my mom went to community college, I said my mom went to comedy college. And, and instead of saying on this day, uh, uh, um, I was born and raised in Orange County, New York. It said on this day, I rised from Orange County. If, if it was meant as a joke, then yes, that's what I've been. But it was all spelling errors and everything. Um, Long story short about it is, like I said, you know, and sum up the whole show, is someone who reads and learns at a fifth grade level, who has poor social skills, what broke the camel's back is I'm the youngest out of four brothers and one sister. My brother before me always said, I don't know what to do with my life, I don't know what to do about this and that, and everyone's like, go talk to him, go talk to your sister, they know people. They can put you in the right direction. So I said, what about me? And they said, what about you? You you piss people off. You don't shut up. You have diary on the mouth. You're not educated. You're not qualified. You never went to college. And you're not capable of doing anything. You're probably going to be a burden and be in a, put in a group home. So I said, you know, screw it. Well, I'll keep it PG. I said, screw it, I'm going to show you it's a disability. Look at what I'm able to accomplish. And I started in 2013, don't actually lie, and we're going on bonus level time uh, because we're over the limit. But I did 72 phone interviews. And I got people from Power Rangers and uh, WWE and uh, Spider Man and X Men, and I was still having a panic attack. So I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm talking to. And then I move uh, a whatever, um, an object. I'm just here by myself. I'm Bob, still having anxiety attacks. Someone said to me, do it over. And you should just, first he said to me, you should, someone like you should have a bigger following, should have sponsors, yada, yada, yada. Um, I said, will you help me? I, he said, no. I said, thanks for wasting my time. And, uh, so second time, someone said to me, do it over, but try something different. So see, season one, it would keep showing that damn screen. All right, so season one, it's what you see I on the reflection. That's I what the, that's what I the can't. camera picked up. Okay, I can't, I can't see anything. All right, on your so phone. I, don't worry, you can see on the uh, video reflection. Oh, oh so, you can? Okay. okay. All right, so pretty much it's you see the reflection of yourself, you know, my hand's the camera, this is the computer screen. And okay. season two was, here's the camera, I'm going to record everything from the computer screen. And okay. someone said to my brother, I'm just giving you the quick highlights. My son and my brother all came across your brother's show, think it's really great. 
why is he in a tiny little box? Because I was in a little box in the screen, right? You're in the full screen, and I'm in the box or whatever. He's like, he should be seen, because I didn't want to be seen. No, I do. Um, because this really means a lot to me. Um, so 2015, I came across Skype Recorder, or Ecamm, where it's cut in half, I'm on the left, you're on the right, or now Skype messed it up somehow, and so I'm trying to figure it out with it. But the sentence is, you know, split screen. So you see the process, but I'm recording from the phone, from recording from the um, camera, from the phone, from the computer screen, to split, split screen, to eventually I'm going to do this, sit down with you in person. I would love that, actually. The start sitting down with people in person. So you see a process. I didn't want to do this from the very start because then you wouldn't have seen the process. And my thing is I do everything ass backwards. So it's like uh, one step forward, two steps back. Um, long story short. So I'm showing you look at what I'm able to accomplish. You mentioned before, um, do you just interview people with disabilities? And it's funny you should say that, but also it gets annoying after a while. It's recently I met Amy DeMont, uh, Rita. She said the same exact thing to me, and I was like, oh, Jesus, you too? It's, she said, on oh, your talk show, you only talk to people with disabilities. No, I uh, actually turned myself into an example to show you, yes, I'm on the spectrum of being, you know, bad. But look at what I'm able to accomplish. But I interviewed actors, actresses, models, CEOs, professional wrestlers, teasers, cheerleaders. I interview every single person out there. And every time I hear, oh, you just hear interview people with disabilities, I'm like, oh, it's okay. It's got to be six years. It would have been nice to appear and that whole watch I just appeared. But I know Amy and Demont and doesn't know, know me or the show, but hopefully she reads about me and sees it. You know, like you said, you probably figured I interview people with disabilities. No, you know, definitely. Um, it's basically, this is therapy for myself because if you went back 10 years ago, I wouldn't. I'll give me an example. Then I'm going to pass it over, then we can wrap up. Um, 10 years ago, in 2009, if I saw you just sitting there, I wouldn't walk over to you because I'm, I am, I'm socially awkward. Funny enough, I wear that on my badge on my job. I'm sorry, I'm socially awkward, <laughs> but, but um, but now because I'm a talk show host, I have something to brag about. I have the confidence to walk over to someone and say, "Hey, my name's Keith Andrew. I'm a talk show host for people with disabilities." Unfortunately, I don't have a mental block in my head where it's a right time, it's just an appropriate time to do that, but I just blur it out. When I worked over at North Face, I had, uh, you know, like the badge, and like, oh, hey, my name is Keith, if you need anything, just let me know. So I hide behind something. Now, I don't have to hide because this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. For you. That's great. Yeah, you found a calling. That's excellent. Okay, so I should get going. So let's wrap this up. I really thank you for this interview. No, absolutely. I have a couple of commitments to do. So, yeah, I'll, I'll let you wrap it up. Well, I do have a couple questions to worry off the air real fast. But wrapping up, you mentioned uh, social media. Uh, but how can people follow you? Are you on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn? And when I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your first reaction, and after being a guest, how do you feel now? Okay, so people can follow me. Um, I'm on Facebook um, under Low and Fitness, L O E W E N Fitness. Um, I'm on Instagram uh, as Rochelle Lowen dot fit. So that's R O C H E L L E L O E W E N dot fit. And um, and then yeah, I think just if one Googles my name, they'll be able to find all of those pages. Um, and so my first reaction onto your second question, my first reaction when you approached me to do the interview was was uh, you know that I'm I'm definitely interested. Yeah, I think that's I think it's for a great cause and 
and I commend you, and, and I'm happy I did it. No, yeah, absolutely. Now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air, but wrapping up, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest, and I'm looking forward to part two right. down the road. Thank you. Thank you.